Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. I continue uh, solving construction problems uh, in, uh, in circles department. Well, some of them are related to circles, some of them are just using circles. Um, as I told you many times before, construction problems are excellent for developing your creativity and analytical skills. So the best thing would be if you solve all these problems yourself and then listen to my lecture. Um, in any case, after you completed this lecture, you understand everything, go through the problems again yourself and try to prove or construct or whatever is required yourself without any kind of additional information. Uh, everything is uh, on the unizor.com website, so uh, please use it as much as you can. Uh, and again, self-study is extremely important. Don't just listen to me. Try to do it yourself before and after you listen to the lecture, if you really want to, to develop that, that thing. <laughs> Um, all right, so now uh, the problems, uh, construction problems here, um, some of them are simple, some of them are a little bit, a little bit more complex. So try to concentrate uh, and, um, well, let's just, let's just go on. Construct a quadrangle that can be inscribed into a circle, which is not given, by its given three sides and a diagonal. So we know that we can inscribe this quadrangle into a circle. But the circle itself is not given. We just know that it's possible. What is given are uh, three sides and diagonal. OK. Now, how to solve this problem just using these four elements and the information about uh, the fact that this particular quadrangle can be inscribed? Well, if you remember, quadrangles which can be inscribed into a circle have a very interesting property. Sum of the opposite angles is 180 degrees. Uh, why? Obviously because this angle is supported by this arc, and this is supported by the complementary arc, making sum is basically the complete circle, which means sum of these two angles uh, is... Uh, 180 degrees, which is because they are inscribed. Um, now, we will use this particular property, and here is how. First of all, considering you have these three elements, you can build this triangle by three sides. So the only thing which we don't really know is position of this point, right? But now, having these three points actually is equivalent to having a circle, because with a triangle we can always circumscribe a circle around it. So not only we can construct this triangle, we also can uh, construct the circle. So now, how can we actually find this point? Well, obviously, because since you know this distance, just use a compass and uh, have this distance as a radius and from this point, and you get the intersection with this one. So that's the fourth point. Construct a rhombus by its side and a radius of an inscribed circle. All right, let's have a rhombus. I'll position it this way. Now, rhombus, as you know, is a parallelogram with all four sides equal in lengths. Now, as you also know, the inscribed circle would touch all four uh, sides. And what's important is that this is perpendicular and this is perpendicular, which means that the diameter of this circle is actually the altitude of a rhombus. So what we know about this rhombus is not only the length of the side, which is actually the length of the all four sides, since they are equal in length. We also know the altitude. So how to do the construction? Have the line, this one, have the side, and another line on the distance equal to double radius, diameter. 
Now here, using this as a radius, you just uh, find this point and similarly this point. And that's your rhombus. So in the rhombus, uh, the diameter of the inscribed circle is the altitude. Construct a right isosceles triangle, circumscribe a right isosceles triangle around a given circle. So you have a circle, and what you have to do is to build the right isosceles triangle, something like this. So this angle is 90 degrees, and these two sides are equal to each other. So given is a circle. We have to build this. But let's just think about it. Uh, if you if you draw this line, which is uh, perpendicular from the top uh, to the base, um, this is obviously uh, an altitude and, uh, and the uh, um, angle bisector, and the median of this, I mean, all, all these things, right? And in addition, these are angles of 45 degrees each, right? Because the sum of them is 90 degrees. So, um, what we also know is that this is 90 degrees, right? Which means that this angle is also 45 degrees. So if you have a circle, the simplest thing to do would be to have this radius into any point, doesn't matter, and at 45 degrees, draw a line here, and tangent at this point. And that's basically it, and tangent at this point. So three tangents, one in this point, one from this point, which is an intersection of a perpendicular uh, of this line, which we initially started, and then the third one, tangent from this point. We're just explicitly using the fact that this is 45 degrees. Construct an isosceles triangle by its base and a radius of an inscribed circle. So you have an isosceles triangle, and you have an inscribed circle. So what you know is a base, which is AC, and you know the radius of an inscribed circle, OD. All right. So, um, let's think about it. base and the radius and the scribe circle. Okay. Um, now, all right. Um, so first what we have to do is obviously uh, have a circle from the base. So you draw a perpendicular with the radius OG from the middle of this point. So that's how you get this and now you can draw a circle. Now, having points A and C and a circle, let me just make it a little bit further. All you have to do basically is draw two tangents. Well, don't pay attention to my drawing. These are tangents to the circle. So since D is the midpoint, 
So AD and DC are equal. It's very easy to prove that these two lines will be uh, congruent to each other. So that's basically how we construct it. That's it. That's so easy stuff. More difficult will be next. No, not next. Construct a triangle by its side and two medians originating from the endpoints of this side. So if you have a triangle, you have a side and two medians originating from uh, this side. So you have AC, you have AB, and you have CD. Now these are uh, congruent segments because these are medians, right? Now, as you know, medians are divided by the point of their intersection in the ratio of 1 to 2. So this is 1 third and this is 2 thirds of the median. Now, what it means basically is that if you will take uh, two-thirds of AE, you will have AM. Multiplied by two-thirds equals to M AM. And if you have CD multiplied by two-thirds, it will give you CM. Now, how can you... How can you multiply uh, um, a particular segment by two-thirds? Well, you divide it uh, by three and then multiply it by two, right? That's what, that's, that's what it means. Now, I'm, I'm sure you remember how to divide a segment in three parts. You just take any other line, have three equal segments, doesn't matter what's the length of each one of them, connect the endpoints and draw parallel. Since these are equal, these will be equal to each other. We have proven this theorem before. So we divide it, divide it by, by 3 using this technique and multiply by 2, which means just attach one to another. So this is how you get AM. Now, since you have AM and similarly you have CM, then triangle A and C can be built, right? So that's the beginning of your construction. You have AC, then you have AM, and CM. This is your point M. Now all you have to do right now is have half of this, well you already actually had one third somewhere. So you just add another third and another third of this segment and here is your triangle. That's it. So you're explicitly using the fact that medians are intersecting at a point which breaks each one, uh, each median uh, in, in the ratio of one, one to two. Okay. Construct a triangle by three medians. Okay. One median, two median, three median. A, B, C, D, E, F. Well, we will do exactly the same thing. We will explicitly use the fact that medians are divided in this 1 to 2 ratio. Because look at this. If you will continue B, E by the same length, which is uh, equal to this one um, and connect it to this so this would be M and this would be N let's say now let's think about this now AM is known that's two-thirds of uh, this particular medium now MN is also known this is, since this is one-third, this is two-thirds of this medium. And, as it is very easy to prove, 
AMCN is a parallelogram because its diagonals are intersecting in the point which divides each one of them um, in, in half. Because this, uh, these two segments uh, have the same length since E is midpoint, and these two segments have the same length by construction. So AN is also equal to two-thirds of the third median. So this triangle has three sides, each, each of them equal to two-thirds of the corresponding median, which means we can start construction from uh, building this particular triangle. Having three medians, we just take two-thirds of each of these uh, three, three medians and start our construction from building this. So this is how it will be. This is our first step. Now, now it's easy. Point E is midpoint of MN, right? So this is E. We draw a line and continue by the same length, and that's our point C. Now, if you continue this by the same sides, we will get B. This side, this um, segment BM is the same as BN. This is two-thirds, this is one-third, plus another third. This is also two-thirds of this medium. So that's our B. And here is our triangle ABC. By the way, this is something which I would say, I don't know, uh, I, I do have some, sometimes um, some aesthetical feelings uh, about mathematical problems. This problem seems to be has certain aesthetic appeal, at least to me. I hope to you too. Um, it's kind of very symmetrical and uh, and it just, you know, I don't know, it's just aesthetically appeal, that's all I can say. All right, so we have built a triangle by three medians. Uh, given a circle and three points on it, construct a triangle such that its three angle bisectors intersect the circle at given points. Okay, that's interesting, actually. So, it might actually be a little bit involved. I do remember um, that it's not a trivial point. So, let's say you have your triangle, and you have three angle bisectors. One angle bisector, another angle bisector, and the third angle bisector. You need to build a triangle using these three points. So these three points are given. Okay. Uh, now we have to find these three points. So these are points of original triangle, and these are points where angle bisectors intersect the circumscribing uh, circle. Well, let's think about it this way. Since, since all these are angle bisectors, the corresponding arcs must be uh, congruent to each other. Because arcs are angles, angles are the same, that's why arcs are the same because the central angles are the same. By the way, if I, will, if I will use something like, okay, the measure of this arc is something and something, I actually mean the measure of the central angle, which is supported by this arc, is something and something. So if arcs are equal to each other or congruent to each other, it means central angles are equal or congruent to each other. That's obvious, right? So. Now let's think about the arcs. So since this is angle bisector, this arc is equal to this arc. In length and in the central angle, if I will draw a central angle, which I don't want to do, it's too complex a drawing will be. Same thing here. This particular arc and this particular arc are equal because these angles are the same, are congruent. And finally, these three, these two will also be 
equal to each other. Okay? Fine. Um, this is good. But now let's think about, about this in the following way. Let me put letters uh, maybe so it will be easier actually. Um, let me just put this is x and this is x and this is uh, y and this is y and this is z and this is Oops, no, 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 I'm sorry. This is Y and this is Y. And this is Z and this is Z. All right? Now, when I'm talking about X, Y, and Z, I mean angular um, measurement of these arcs, which means measure of the central angle, which is supported by this Arc. So what I can say is that uh, 2x plus 2y plus 2z equals 360. 2x plus 2y plus 2z equals 360. It's a full circle, which means the sum of these central angles is equal to 360. Right? Now, what also is important is the following. Um, Uh, okay. Let's connect these guys. Now, points F, G, and and E are, are actually given. Now, what does it mean? It means that we basically have expression for this arc from F to E, which is Z plus Y. So Z plus Y, Y plus Z, is known. And this E is equal to, well, let's say A, whatever the measurement of the central angle which is supported by this arc is. That's z plus y. Similarly, x plus z is also given. And let's say it's b. And similarly, x plus y is also given. And let's say it's c. So, sum of, uh, sorry, sum of this is uh, one thing, some of this is another, some of this is the third one. And we also know that A plus B plus C is also equal to 360. Well, to tell you the truth, it's enough to algebraically solve these, uh, these equations. Uh, let's think about this. From this, you get X plus Y plus Z is equal to 180. And since y plus z is a, you have x is equal to 180 minus a. Similarly, from here, we get y is equal to, we subtract from this, this, and we get 180 minus b. And similarly, z is equal to 180 minus c. Basically, this is a solution, because you know what to do. So you take the angle A, which is, I think it's this one, Y plus Z, which is a central angle from, let's say, F, O, E. I don't want to put one. Well, actually, I can use another color. Okay. This is our A. And this is our B. And this is our C. So what you do is you take 180 minus A, which means you have an A, and have 
the uh, complementary to 180 angle. How is it called? No, supplementary. Supplementary, yes, supplementary angle. And supplementary to A would be X, which is this one. Then Y and Z corresponding. So you have basically all the angles. Now, having all the angles, it's very easy, basically, to, to do the job. All you have to do is, for instance, you found X. Now, having OD and having X, you just draw a, 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 a central angle, which you have just calculated, and that would be your point B, etc. So I have um, demonstrating, de demonstrated something which is maybe a little unusual. I'm using algebra to, um, to, to, to solve geometric equations. Fine, whatever, what, whatever works. By the way, the same thing can be geometrically described to you. But the, um, the drawing would be a little bit more complicated. So I think it's as good, basically. There's nothing wrong with the solution. Um, if you can find a better one, well, send me an email. That's fine. OK, next. Given a circle and three points on it, construct a triangle such that three altitudes intersect circle of given points. So it's exactly the same kind of a problem, but instead of angle bisectors, I have altitudes. So I have altitude to this. I have this point. I have altitude to this. I have this point. And I have altitude to this. And I have this point. So these are right angles. OK. OK. Uh, here is what's very interesting about this particular problem. Consider these two angles, this one and this one. They're both right angles, right? So they're equal to each other. Also, um, I'm sure you remember that any angle which is inside, which is um, formed by two chords inside a circle, let's say this angle, is measured as half the sum of this uh, arc plus this arc. When I'm saying half the sum of the arcs means same half the sum of central angles supported by these arcs. So it's half of this plus half of this. Now, consider these angles. They're both they're both 90 degrees, they're both right, so they're equal to each other. Also, they are supported by this, now this angle is supported by this arc and this arc. Now, this angle, which is congruent to this, 90 degree, is supported also by two arcs. One of them is exactly the same. So what does it mean? It means that the other arc which supports this angle. So let me put letters A, B, C, D, E, F. So what I have actually said right now is that arc, arc C, D should be congruent to arc C, E. C, D and CE. Why? Again, because this angle is supported by this plus this divided by, by, divided by 2. This angle, which is equal to this one, also 90 degree, is also supported by this, but now it's the second component is this. 
So if angles are the same, and one component is the same of the sum, then another component of the sum should be the same. So these are equal in length, in uh, measurements or whatever else. That's very important because now these points are given to you, right? So how can I find C? Well, if this E is, is, is point C divides this arc in half, all I have to do is draw an, uh, a chord and perpendicular to the chord, and that's how I get the C point. Same thing here. Draw a chord and perpendicular, that's how I got this. And same thing here. That's the construction. So it was very important, actually, to realize that these two should be the same. Okay, the last problem. Um, you have a triangle. I mean, you don't have a triangle. You do have a circle which circumscribes this triangle. And you have three points. Uh, not a good drawing. Let me try again. Okay, this triangle, okay? Now, the median from this point, the angle bisector, and the altitude. So, median, median, which I called M, angle bisector, which I call S, and altitude, which I call H. So these are points of intersection of median, angle bisector, and uh, the altitude from the same top point B. So you have a circle, and you have three points on it, which are intersections of median, angle bisector, and altitude from the same vertex. By these three points on this circle, you have to reconstruct the triangle. Okay. All right, now, let's think about it. Um, BS is angle bisector. So these two angles are congruent, which means arc ACAS should be congruent to arc CS. AS and CS, they must be congruent to each other. Because this angle, ABS, is supported by AS, and SBC is supported by CS. Since angles are the same, inscribed angles, the arcs must be the same. Central angles which are supported by these arcs must be the same, right? Now, so, S is a midpoint of the arc, and therefore, if you connect a center of a circle with the midpoint of an, uh, of an arc, it must cross uh, the chord which, end, which, which connects end point uh, of this arc. It, it must intersect the chord in the middle and be perpendicular to it. Remember, let me just draw a, a different drawing. It would be more obvious. If this point divides the arc in half, then the chord which connects end points of the arc would be perpendicular to radius to uh, midpoint of the arc. We have proven this many times before. So what it means is that if I will connect the center of the center oh, of the circle with a point where angle bisector M, S, and H 
So if I will connect this, it will be perpendicular to this uh, chord, which is basically a side of an angle uh, of a triangle, and it will divide it in half. But now, BH is also perpendicular to the same AC because this is the altitude, right? Which means that OS and BH are parallel to each other, which means if I will draw this, I will hit the point B. Hooray! We've got one point of our triangle. Now, if I connect B and M, it will intersect this radius OS, it will intersect in the middle of AC, right? Because AC uh, uh, is the side and BM is uh, median. So if I will connect this to this, the intersection point is the midpoint of AC. Great! Now in this, I will just draw a perpendicular. which is perpendicular to our height, and these are my points A and C. So that's our triangle. That's it. Very easy, right? Well, not very easy. This is actually another um, construction problem which I consider not only um, mathematically, so to speak, but also aesthetically. Um, when I first time look at the problem, okay, you have these three points on the circle, uh, the intersection of median uh, bisector, angle bisector, and, and an altitude, it's, well, kind of scary, because you don't really know where to, to start looking for whatever the solutions are. But then if you think about this and you realize that the bisector uh, divides the chord in half, uh, divides the arc in half, and that's why you can just draw a, a radius to this, it will be perpendicular to the chord, etc. I mean, the whole business of, uh, of, the, of the construction. It unravels, so to speak. But in the beginning, it's kind of interesting and a little bit scary, at least for me it was. But then if you think about this, you find the solution. Th that's, where, that's exactly what, what the whole course is, is designed for. It's designed to, to push you towards uh, solving problems which you just don't know how to solve. I did not know how to solve this problem until I really think about it and, uh, you know, come up with a solution. All right, thank you very much. Uh, please do all these problems again yourself. Uh, go to the website and just look at the notes to this lecture. All of them are there. And uh, don't forget, you can uh, enroll into a specific course or your parents or teachers or supervisors can enroll you into a specific course where you will have to go through exams get some score, and make sure you will get the maximum score available. All right, thank you very much. That's it for today, and good luck.